this is John Buck. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about LTI systems and causality. Uh, specifically, we know if a system is linear and time invariant, we can tell everything we need to know about its properties, uh, about its behavior, from the impulse response, right? The impulse response completely determines the output using the input from a convolution sum. So that means the impulse response should also tell us anything we want to know about other properties of the system, like is it causal and is it stable? Uh, in this video, I'll talk about causality. In the next video, uh, uh, there's a, a companion video that talks about stability. So I'll talk about that and then show a couple of examples. Again, so our, our topic for this is, is, is uh, LTI systems and stability. I'm sorry, and causality in this video. So again, we said, if I have an LTI system, I know the output is completely determined by the convolution of the impulse response with the input. And in this case, I've used the commutative property to, to switch around which is X and which is H from the version we first derived. But we know that the test for causality is still the same. Remember, for any system, we said, if a system is causal, what that means is the time index of the output is always greater than or equal to the time indices for the input. And at first glance, you'd say, well, this looks like a lost cause because the, as k goes from minus infinity to plus infinity, this sum has all of the different values of x in it, past and future. But what we'll see is the key is we're saying, well, Anywhere where this h that's weight multiplying is zero, it will turn off the input, right? So we'll see we want, we need the time index of the output is n, and we need n to be greater than or equal to n minus k for all the values of x that actually get used in the sum, right? That, that actually contribute to the sum. I say, well, I can subtract n from both sides and add k. So if I subtract n, add k to both sides. I end up with that this is equivalent to saying I need k greater than zero for the causal terms, right? And looking back at the sum, that makes sense. If k is greater than zero, if k is like a two or a three, I have n minus two, n minus three. Those are past values of this. So we say, well, how do I make sure only the positive values of k contribute to the sum? Well, that what we need for that to happen is that means I need h of k to be equal to zero for all the negative values of k. So if if this is true, then the system will be causal. Okay, so it's actually a really easy test. If I look at an impulse response of an LTI system and it's zero for all the negative times, the system is causal. So let's see some examples of that. The first one, uh, uh, impulse response is a half to the n, u of n. Often I find the best way to do these when you're just starting out is just sketch them out. You can look at something and say, is it going to be zero in negative time or not? So for negative n, this u of n will always be zero, right? The unit step is zero if its index, if its, if its independent variable is less than zero. So like minus three, minus two, minus one, these are all zero. At time zero, this will be one, and at one half to the zero will also be one. So at time zero, this thing We'll turn on, and then so it would be one, then a half at time one, then a quarter at time two, an eighth at time three, and so on, dying down slowly. So it'll go on to the right forever, but the key idea here, what, what I'm looking at is what's going on in negative time. And right here I can see that this is equal to zero for n less than zero, right? For all n less than zero, I've got zero values, and it, it will be that way as I keep going to the left because of this u of n. So I can look at this and say that this system is causal because h1 of n equals zero uh, when n is, is less than zero, right? So this is a happy causal system. Look at one more example. We can say, well, what if I have a different impulse response? H2 of n is just u of n minus 3. 
Well, again, we know, you know, u of n, or u of any r, u of n equals one if n is greater than or equal to zero. So the same way we could say u of n plus three equals one if n plus three is greater than or equal to zero. Or if I solve that, I'll get for n greater than or equal to minus three, right? So if I sketch h2 of n, maybe I'll tuck it in the upper right corner here. Again, it will be minus five be zero, minus four will be zero, but at minus three, when n is minus three, this argument is zero, and when the argument is zero, that's when the unit step turns on. So at minus three, and if I'm making my sketch of h2 of n, it turns on and it stays one ever and after after that. So I'll, I'll sort of do a dot, dot, dot to show it goes on. I'm not so worried about what's going on to the right. What's got me worried is that stuff there. These are values at negative time that are not zero. So that means when I do the flipping and shipping with the conv flipping and shifting with the convolution, I'm going to see uh, values from the future contribute to my convolution sum, and that means I'm not causal. So for this one, we can say the system is not causal because h2 of n is not equal to zero when, when n is less than zero. Okay, so very simple test. It actually turns out if, if that's why linearity and time invariant is so important. If, if I have linearity and time invariance, then I can say, well, the impulse response tells me everything about the system. And it's really easy to sketch one out and figure out, is, it neg is the impulse response zero for all the negative times? If it is, the system is causal. If it's not, it isn't. Easy as that. Okay, so that's all for this video. I'll see you next time.